，二十三岁遭遇车祸，颈部一下全部瘫痪，但灾难没有将他打垮，反而令他更坚强。曾是工程师的 Steven Fletcher 在饱受精神和肉体的极度痛楚之后，投身政界，立志帮助更多有需要的人。他曾是缅省进步保守党最年轻的党魁，年仅三十二岁就被选民送入国会。短短四年后，更成为民主改革部部长。面对人生的不公 ，Fletcher 没有自暴自弃、怨天尤人，反而奋发图强，取得重大成就。So, Minister, you must be very busy this week in Toronto. That's right. We made some announcements on uh, helping uh, research into cancer at the University of Toronto. We've made.、Um, A number of very、uh, important strategic investments、uh, through a new fund the federal government has created, the FedDev、uh, Development Agency for Southern Ontario, and it's pro proving to be very successful. We want to ensure that Ontario、uh, comes out of this world recession stronger and better than when it came in. Okay, and as the Minister of Democratic Reform, you 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 are responsible for the、uh, Senate Senator Reform legislation. Could you give us some in brief introduction about that? Sure. Well, as your viewers will know, well, Parliament is made of two chambers: the House of Commons and the Senate.、Uh, the Senate,、um, to get into the Senate, you're appointed directly by the Prime Minister,、uh, and up to 45 years without any. Renewal of the term or anything of that nature. So we want to reform the Senate to uh, create uh, an eight-year non-renewable term. So、um, that will allow a refreshment of the Senate. We also want、uh, Canadians to elect their senators. Okay. Do you have a time frame for that? The main focus of the government is on the economy, and we want to、uh, make sure that everything. That we are doing is focused on that in the, the short to medium term.、Uh, the Senate reform. Uh, uh, the joke is that th that discussion started on July second, eighteen sixty-seven. So a day after Canada was formed, because it's been an ongoing discussion for a long time. And、uh, but I think I'm, I'm optimistic about the term limits and and the Senate elections in the longer term. How about promoting democracy abroad? Well, this is an important issue. Canada plays a major role on the world stage.、Uh, the prime minister has asked if I would look into creating an agency to、uh, help promote democracy ab abroad, particularly political、uh, help in, in political party development、um, right across the、uh, political spectrum, and、uh, we're moving forward with that. Okay, talking about yourself, you、uh, you was appointed as minister when you were only 36, and you are the first MP in Canadian history with a permanent disability.、Uh, that's a really amazing accomplishment. Well, thank you. I you know I have to say that politics was Plan Z、uh, when I was growing up. I、um, uh, but at When I was、uh, 23, I hit a moose with my car. I was an I was an engineer in the mining industry, and、um, that left me completely paralyzed from the neck down. And I was told that if I were to live, I would likely live in an institution. And so I started to fight to, first of all, for my own life, and try to、uh, live in the community. I found that other people were benefiting from my advocacy, and、um, uh, one thing led to another, and got involved in politics, and、uh, I found myself、uh, in the Parliament of Canada. The wonder of Canada is that anyone, regardless of your life circumstance, can succeed and reach their full potential as human beings. Okay, and、uh, you said that the accident changed your political view.、Yeah. You describe yourself as compassionate conservative. So,、uh, from where your conservative ideolo ideology is coming from? My belief is that individuals are the best people to make the decisions for themselves.、Uh, that big government is is、uh, 
not uh, the way to go. Um, when I had my accident, I wanted to be empowered to take control of my ho own life, and uh, though I needed help to do that, uh, government and government agencies helped me do that. I require 24-hour, seven-day care, seven-day, um, you know, every day, every moment I have an attendant and I rely uh, on them for help. Um, but I'm in a program where I can select those people myself, hire them, you know, uh, instead of having, you know, a government send them in, uh, I've been empowered to uh, make those decisions for myself. And I think that's uh, very symbolic of the conservative attitude towards uh, a lot of things. One is we want to empower people to make the best decisions for themselves. We recognize that there are times when government can really have a major impact on people's lives, especially um, when they're uh, down and out. Uh, but if you empower people, they will try and fulfill and meet their objectives as their full potential as human beings. And uh, that's why I'm a conservative. I believe in the individual. I believe that government has a role to play, but not such a big role that, uh, that they dominate and suffocate people. You embrace that ideology. And then uh, when you were in the university, you were accused of administrative uh, bias against left-wing groups. Well, what can I say? You know, uh, the um, university campuses are notoriously uh, left of center. I was a conservative elected in a left of center environment, and I was re-elected in a left of center environment, and that drove the sort of the far left uh, students uh, crazy. But democracy spoke. People appreciated what I was doing, and uh, you know you're always going to have critics. But at the end of the day, the, the you know we're talking a long time ago now. The student union. Uh, came out of debt and more money was put into uh, student programs and uh, student fees went down. So uh, that was a success and, uh, and a very similar thing is happening in Canada uh, under a conservative government. Uh, you know, uh, taxes are going down, greater investments are made in priority social programs, are um, in through a very difficult time and through no fault of our own Canada it's doing better in this world recession than any other developed country and will come out of the recession stronger than when we went in. Let's go back to, the, to that accident. Uh, I think the night you became paralyzed must be the longest and hardest night in your life. Yeah, um, the night I, uh, I found out um, of course, I didn't believe it. I, uh, I think the the most the most difficult time was in the weeks, months, and years afterwards, when I was hoping to be cured or hoping that there would be a cure. The realization that that wasn't going to happen. And uh, you know, when I had the accident, I was uh, put on a, ve a ventilator. I couldn't talk um, because I couldn't breathe. Uh, the um, uh, all I could do was move my eyes, but I was fully conscious for months, and um, in a very serious situation, unable to really communicate uh, properly with anyone, and trapped in my own mind. It was uh, it was terrifying for months. It was just not one night. It was for many many months, and then told that. Uh, if I were to live, to, uh, you know, what kind of life would be in an institution? You know, that's uh, life to look forward to. Oh, I will tell you, I did get a little bit of satisfaction when I was elected, because I went back to some of those people who said I would be in an institution. And uh, though I don't think they ever thought that institution would be the Parliament of Canada. Okay, but despite your extremely difficult situation, you never give up on life. But have you sometime, have you, uh, felt despaired sometimes? Sure. You know, um, you know people uh, measure success in a lot of different ways. This is the level of success that I've always thought uh, 
is uh, you know family, having a family of my own. Um, you know that uh, you know has not occurred, and that would, would be my plan A. Um, you know the greatest title I think uh, a male can have in our society is uh, father and husband, and uh, you know that you know was not part of the. Uh, the um, part of my life, unfortunately. Um, having said that, um, you do what you can, and uh, you know I've been given a, a very uh, humbling opportunity to give back to the country that's given me so much. And uh, look, life is not fair, and um, um, it's just not fair. But you have to play. W uh, with the cards that you're dealt and make the best of it. And I think that's part of the conservative philosophy as well. It, we all, as Canadians, should have the opportunity to reach our full potential as human beings. So you are an inspiration for many people, especially for those with disability? I'll leave it up to those people to decide. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm. Canadian, just like anyone else, uh, trying to uh, do the best they can under difficult circumstances, and uh, and I can't believe the ability of the human body to uh, feel pain uh, physically, psychologically, and emotionally at that extreme, but also th the ability of humans to support each other, help each other, um, have fun, live life, uh, seek knowledge and experiences, interact, uh, help those that uh, need help. Actually, we help lots of people who need help, those people with hepatitis C and cancer. But you also said that if all the resources in the world cannot help, you would choose to die with dignity, that, that is uh, euthanasia. Is that because of your own experience? Yes, well, um, the issue of euthanasia is obviously something that goes to the core of what it means to be alive. I've um, experienced some things that if I were to experience it over a long period of time, um, I, would, um, I would have to say I'd rather uh, try my on my chances on the other side. That's uh, my own personal view, I, um, and that's based on my own experience. Other people have different points of view, but I want to be empowered to make those decisions uh, for myself, and um, uh, especially a deeply personal decision. And if I can't make it myself, I want my people who love me to make the decision. Um, what you're referring to, of course, is a private member's bill that was introduced um, last fall on uh, euthanasia and uh, dealing with uh, if people should have the right to die and uh, I'm sort of a, an outcast uh, with uh, most members of other parties because I, I do uh, support in some cir circumstances uh, someone's ability to um, on. There's a famous case, the Sue Rodriguez case in uh, BC about uh, 10 years ago where this person with ALS, which is a, a muscular degenerative disease, um, fought to have the right to die uh, because essentially what was going to happen is she was going to drown in her own phlegm, um, which is a terrible way to go. I've been there. I know that because that's what happened after my accident for a very long time. My lungs had collapsed, and and it was it's, it was a it, it was a terrible thing to have gone through. Um, but unlike her, I was going to get. I was going to improve, and she was going to go the other way. So in a case like that, I would support uh, the right to die. But it's very controversial. I know that, and. Uh, I think what's important when we go into discussions like this is that people think about these issues. Talking about your personal life, you were a canoe enthusiast. Are you still doing any sports today? 
<laughs> that you've done your research. I'm impressed. Yes, before my accident, um, I was a very avid uh, wilderness canoeist. I uh, enjoyed going out for weeks on end in the great Canadian wilderness. And I think it's the only place in the world where you can, you know, take a cup, and grab some water off the side of the boat and drink it without any fear. Uh, and just being out there is really what I, where I gained my spirituality uh, and really appreciation for, for, uh, for life. Um, right now, I, I, you know, does politics count as a sport? Because if, if it does, then I, I, I can say yes, I'm involved in sport. But um, uh, I have done some disabled sailing since my accident and some. Uh, hiking and so on. You were born in Brazil, and you, but your father is Canadian. Well, actually, my dad was born in uh, Malaysia, in uh, KL, Kuala Lumpur, um, and uh, he came to Canada, met my mom, uh, who was an Albertan, and then uh, he had an opportunity as an engineer to work in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, and I uh, was a result of, of uh, something, whatever. I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. But uh, of whatever happened down there, uh, I came along nine months later and, uh, uh, and became a Brazilian-born Canadian. So I'm actually also the first uh, Brazilian uh, uh, born Canadian to be elected to to the Parliament of Canada. You know, people want to win the Lotto 649, you know, Lotto every week. You know, they want to win the $50 million. Well, I think uh, those of us who are fortunate enough to live in this country, uh, we've already won the lottery. <laughs>